Hello to everyone. Hello to everyone. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Can you guys hear me today? I can hear you, Scott. Okay, great. Good. Yes. All right. Well, we should have a, a pretty full house, so thanks for joining me. Let's get started. Uh, Carl, looks like you're first on my list, and we'll try to get to everybody. What have you got for me this evening, Carl? Well, I just wanted to report that that uh, Seagate installation uh, ended up working out real well, and so did the addition of the, uh, the Air Express. Um, that solved our, our problems in the house in terms of the length. Great. That's good to hear. Uh, for those listening, Carl has a very long rectangular house. He's got his airport extreme on one end of the house, and when he wants to join his network on the other end of the house, he falls off. So he got an airport express, was able to set that up, put it in the middle of the house, and got a great signal. Excellent. Um, do you have any any other questions or anything, Carl, or are you just listening? No, the... Not right now. Yeah, right. nothing pressing, so I'll, uh, you can go to the other folks. All right. I'm going to move to Daryl. Daryl, what have you got? Are you with us, Daryl? Uh, yeah, yeah, not, uh, not anything yet, Scotty. All right, I'll skip over to Dave. Dave, thanks for joining us. What can I do for you this evening? Yes, yeah, yeah, simple question. question. Uh, I uh, upgraded uh, Adobe, Adobe uh, Reader. Yeah. Reader. Reader. Yeah. The 11.0.06. Yeah. And in Safari, when you pull open up something and try to print it, it prints a blank page. Yes. I don't like Adobe Reader very much. And I'm going to tell you how, I'm going to tell you what I would do if I were you, Dave. I would throw it away and get rid of it, and I would use Preview that's built into the operating system because Preview works 100% of the time versus Adobe Reader that you're experiencing that doesn't work all the time. Um, you do not need, although okay. internet websites will lead you to believe, you do not need Adobe Reader to look at PDF files. Um, so if you okay, would okay. you like me to kind of point you how you're going to do that? Yes, that would be helpful. All right, I'm going to jump over to your screen. So I'm going to send a message to make you the presenter, and I'm also going to request your keyboard. So when you see a couple of messages pop up uh, on your screen right now, say, yes, you'd like to share your screen. This is a, this is a question that I get all the time. Um, this and Flash, they're just, it's, it's constant. So Dave, once you've allowed yourself to be the presenter, we should see your screen. Okay, now, if you would, Dave, uh, I'm actually, I'm going to control your screen here. I'm going to click on okay. Safari, and I, I need to quit Safari because this uh, Adobe Reader is a plugin that works inside a browser, so we don't want the browser running while we're doing this. Okay. Uh, and I also see that you have Firefox running as well, so we're going to uh, quit Firefox in just a second. Uh, let's see here. All right, and I'm just going to hide your email. For anybody else that we're jumping over to your screen today, uh, just do do me a favor and close as many other programs except for GoToMeeting uh, that you can, unless there's a specific program that you have uh, that, that we need to talk about and open. So we're going to try to quit all those things. I tell you what, Dave, we're going to pop back to you. I'm going to jump back over to me for a second and um, while you close everything else, all right? All right, I'll close everything else. Okay. Everything? Yeah, except for GoToMeeting. All right. Yeah, gotcha. All right. Uh, let's see. While we're doing that, we're going to pop back over to you, Dave, in just a second. Jane is with us this evening. Jane's having a little bit of hard time connecting. Jane, if you can hear us, you're connected through your phone, but you can push a button to connect to uh, the mic and speakers, and that's in the Go to Meeting control panel. Um, while Dave's quitting that, Joanne, I'm going to jump over to you real quick. Joanne, do you have a, a quick question for us before we go back to Dave? Um, yes. yes. How, How do I, I empty, empty photos, photos in the trash, trash can? Okay. So if you want to delete a picture, as I've talked to before, it's not easy to delete that picture anymore. You take a picture. You have to, if you want to get rid of a picture that you've taken, you just don't want it in your life anymore. I'm kind of backing up and answering a couple questions before we get to this last part. You have to delete it off of the camera roll of the device that you took it on. You have to delete it out of photo stream. When you delete it out of PhotoStream, it's left off of your uh, camera in the PhotoStream area. It's taken out of the PhotoStream folder on an iPad. It's taken out of the PhotoStream folder on your iMac, but it's still in your Photos area on your iMac or your computer if you have 
iCloud photo stream syncing turned on. So you have to go into iPhoto, and this is where we get to your question. We have to go into iPhoto, select the picture inside the photos area, not to be mistaken with the iCloud area within iPhoto, delete it out of the, the photos area. Now it's in the iPhoto trash. Now you have to empty the iPhoto trash, and there's a file, it's under file, empty iPhoto trash, and that's, that gets rid of it. iPhoto trash and um, deleted email trash has nothing to do with the trash can in your dock. So if you empty your trash in your computer, like, you know, under the finder, file, empty trash, or whatever it is, that's not going to delete that picture. So you have to empty the iPhoto trash from within iPhoto. Does that make sense? All right, I'm going to jump back um, over. Go ahead. Is there trash on, there trash on the iPhone and the iPad that you have to delete or computer? No, no. Once you've deleted it, it, it goes away. Now, for you've, you've done some security work in your life. You understand that anything can be gotten back in the long term. Depends on how much you want to pay for it. So, yes, if you actually deleted something in the long run... Uh, we could go back in a time machine back up and, and you know, there's ways to still get pictures back if we absolutely had to, but it would be not the easiest thing. All right, I'm going to jump back over to Dave. Dave, let's uh, pull okay. your screen back up again here. Give me a second, Dave, to send over to you. All right, Dave, you should see that request for us to look at your screen again. Yeah, should I close Finder then? No, the Finder's fine. The Finder does not ever close. All right, we'll see that. And what we're going to okay. do here with Firefox and Safari and all those other browsers quit, we're going to go in and take out the Adobe Reader plugin that Dave has installed. That's not allowed him to. That's uh, it's not allowing to, him to print now. So to do that, we're going to go on your computer. I'm going to go to the Finder. And let's see if I can select Finder. There we go. Now I'm going to go under the word Go, and I'm going to go to your hard drive or your computer in this case. That internet plugin is global for all the users, so it doesn't live inside your hidden users library. Um, I, you might not understand this, but I'm, I'm saying certain things to people that have been with me before. I'm just kind of reminding them. There are two libraries on your computer. There's your user's library, and then there's your computer library. And we see that here. Your computer library is where that, that file is. So uh, we're going to go to library. We're going to go into internet plugins right here. And at the top, we're going to see Adobe PDF Viewer and this other plugin and we're going to say goodbye to those. We don't need to rely on Adobe to look at PDF files because preview is there already. Now we might have to have your password in a second uh, or you'll type it in if it pops up. I've, I've deleted those. There you go. Now type your password in for your computer. Dave, we don't see that. Good. Now we're going to get out of here we're going to go back to Safari, and our internet connection might be a little bit slow. And we're going to go to a PDF, a, a site that has a PDF file on it. And this time, you're going to see at the bottom, things will be a little different. Um, we've got all this going on here. A lot of tabs open, which is going to slow us down a little bit. Uh, Nancy, we're going to get to you in just a second. You're going to be next in the list here. So, yeah, uh, uh, I think we won't have to. They're loading in the background, and that's slowing us down a little bit. And since I'm control, there we go. Uh, let's see. Let's see if I just did that okay. And I'm hoping I've got a PDF file on my website, Dave, that I'm trying to get to, and that's under All the right. answers section. And over to the right, it's my little list of key commands, but it's a good place to uh, test this PDF issue. So once this loads, over over to the right, we're going to see um, uh, commonly used key commands, which is right down here. We're going to select that. And now Acrobat, Adobe Acrobat, is not in charge of displaying this PDF file. 
preview is in charge of it. And if you'll notice, Dave, down here, this, let, this set of buttons down here at the bottom is different than the set of buttons that you had in Acrobat. And these will work, the other one doesn't. So from here, you could go file print if you wanted to, and it would print just fine. All right? Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, did you have, or you, you feel okay about the answer I just gave you there, Dave? Well, well, when, when I, when I, I go to, let's say, a, 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 a banking site, I want to put off a banking statement, statement and, it and it pulls up the downloads of PDF, PDF file, and the viewer is a PDF file. file. Do, I have Do I have to open it and preview to print it? If you download a PDF file, we'll download this PDF file right now. If you download a PDF file, there are many different types of programs that will give you the ability to, to view PDF files. If I do a right click here, let's see, there we go. Uh, and I'm going to, it's kind of, I'm sluggish on trying to control your computer here. Uh, let's see. All right, see where that says Adobe, open with Adobe Reader? We don't, we don't want to do yes. that. We, that's not what we want to do. Mm -hmm. So if you want to save this for the rest of your life, which in this case is a, is a good thing to have, you would download that. So you hover over here and you click that download button. Now, depending on where you have this particular browser, in this case Safari, set to download, and most likely it's going into the downloads folder, then you can go and open it in the downloads folder. Now this next piece of this question, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to minimize this. I get this out of the way, has nothing to do with viewing a PDF file in a browser. You now have a PDF file on your computer and you want to open that. So over here, you've got your downloads folder right there, down there at the bottom, but I'm not going to click on that that way. I want to get a little bit better view of it. So I'm going to open the finder and we're going to actually go to your downloads folder. You can redirect downloads to go to any place. Uh, you can redirect them to go to your desktop or uh, your documents folder if you want, but in your house, in this particular case, you have a downloads folder, which is right there, and one of the most recent things that's been downloaded is that PDF file. So you got a lot of PDF files here, and notice that they have red icons, these red pictures at the on the yeah. left. That means right now, yeah. that tells me that if I were to double click this, now remember, we're out of, we're out of Safari now. We're not talking about plugins. Now we're talking about different applications that can open different programs. And when you okay. double click that PDF file right now, it's going to open in Adobe Acrobat, which again, I don't really care for very much. So here is a great tip for everybody listening. Whenever you have a file that, let's say it could be a Word document. See, you've got this .dot file down here. If you double clicked on that, that, that blue little icon right there tells me that Microsoft Word is going to open that. But I don't want right. to sit through Microsoft Word opening that. Microsoft Word takes too long to open. I want to open it up in TextEdit or I want to open it up in Pages. So this PDF file or any of these documents, the trick is to do a right click. If you right click on the file, then you see Open With. And if you scroll down to Open With, now it's going to give us a list of all the candidate applications that it could open it with. So here's a PDF file, and it says, well, default-wise, it wants to open it in Adobe Reader. But like I said, I'm not a big fan of Adobe Reader, so I could open it in Preview if I want to. In other words, you have control of the way the, the, the file opens. This could be a JPEG. It could be a Word document. It could be a calendar file. It could be all kinds of things. But you don't want to have to do that every single time. So let's say that you want your PDF files to open in preview every time you double click. Are you with okay. me? Are you with me okay so far? Yep. Yep. All right. Yep. So you could just right click and choose the application. Or you could say from now on thou shalt open PDF files in blank. So let's do that right now. Uh, you take any one of these files, select it one time, and you go Command I. Or you could do right click and get info. So either way, right click and get info or command I. And when that happens, we get this window. Uh, and I'm a little behind you here, so you can see things, Dave, that we don't see yet. And down here in this window, this is the information window. Down here, one right. of those variables is open with. And the reason I'm spending so much time on this right now is because this is really important for anybody. 
open with, if I hit that triangle there, there to the left, now I have the ability to say, from now on, open all my PDF files with preview. And I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble controlling your computer there, but I'm going to go down to preview. Now notice when I select preview to be the file, uh, to, to be the application that this file opens in. Now I have the button that says change all. Now if I hit this button, Dave, to change all, this means that going forward, every PDF file that you have and you double click, preview would open. And if you did a little race for yourself and you opened the PDF file in uh, Acrobat and you opened the PDF file in Preview, my money is on Preview that's going to open fastest. <laughs> all right? Okay. Now, I'm not going to push that change all button right now, Dave. I'm going to let you do that if you want to in the future. So for now, that one PDF file, the one that we had, that one would open in preview, but the others wouldn't because we did not hit that change all button. What did you do to open that, that dialog box on the left? Was it right click? You can do a right click, and if you do a right click, and I've just done a right click and I'm waiting for it to show up, you can do a right click and choose get info, or you could use one of my favorites, and that is command I to get info. If you hold down command I, then it pulls up the same get info window. Okay. All right, and it's, and it's down there. Oftentimes it's hidden that that little dialog box right there is hidden. Okay. All right, okay. you have to go over there and then choose the application. Often it's- You can change, change, change all. all. All right. I got, I got your phone, phone. I, I know where you live. All right, <laughs> all right. So now these icons that we've done that, it's saying to us, are you sure that you wanna change the PDF files? Are you sure that you want to make this big change? And yes, you're, you're moving on with your life. You are leaving Adobe Acrobat. Winchell, do you agree that we should leave Adobe Acrobat? Yeah. 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 Yes, okay. five out of five Winchells agree that we should leave Adobe Acrobat. All right, so that's taken care of. We're going to move on here. Uh, let's see, I've got Nancy. Nancy, I realize. Thank you. No problem. I'm going to jump off of your screen now. We're going to go back to me. Nancy and I have had a little bit of a conversation the last uh, couple of days. She's got some email issues. And Nancy, I sent you an email just a couple of minutes ago saying that I might have a solution for you. Are you with me? Yeah, I just lost all y'all. That's okay. I'm. We're gonna make uh, you the presenter here. Uh, oh, oh. Do you see? Do you see a request on your screen, Nancy, for us to look at your uh, screen? And can you grant us permission? I see a complete black screen. Well, that's not good. Uh, hmm. We're dead in the water. <laughs> it, it happened when Winchell came, came on. on. Oh. When she'll cause uh, Okay, well, I tell you what, Nancy, look down in your dock and see if you can. Oh, yes, he is. Uh, Nancy, look down in your dock and see if you can find the go to meeting there button. You are. Okay, you're back. All right, Nancy, do you see? Gotcha now. Good. Do you see I'll your? See you. Do you see a request? I'm going to send a request to both control and look at your screen. And when you see that, please allow us to do so. Nancy has this email issue where her Gmail account is not syncing with her phone and also her husband's email account is not syncing. And my suspicion is that Nancy's uh, email database is corrupt. I've seen this several times in the last several weeks, but it's not a big deal. Uh, so we're going we're gonna to try something here, Nancy. And Nancy and I have a little uh, deal going that if we don't get it solved, we're gonna, I'm, I'll work on it with her privately here. So we're going to spend a second here and see if we can knock this out of the park, okay? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take okay. Nancy, I'm going to take control of your screen, and I'm just going to talk through this with everybody while we're, while we're doing this, and hopefully we can knock it out. Uh, Nancy, we're going to quit your email. Now, yeah, because it's still not syncing, right? Correct. All right, and we're going to close whatever that is. We're not going to deal with that right now. And I'm going to open up a finder window, and I can do that several different ways. I can use the smiling, happy face there in the bottom left. Now, in your case here, Nancy, we're going to go to the hidden library. Remember, we talked about two different libraries a little while ago. So to find the hidden secret library, we're going to go to the word go, and I'm going to hold down the option key, and that reveals that library. This is the library that Apple doesn't want us to see. It's, uh, it's the hidden one. So now, that library, that, um, that email, I've got to get my head around this, that email cache file that I believe is corrupt in your case is... 
in the word containers. This is people would never find this, uh, and I normally I normally don't throw this away. I don't I normally don't deal with this, but we're going to deal with it here. This is the file right here that I think is bad for you, Nancy. So what I'm going to do before we just go throwing it all out, I'm going to save that. So I'm going to come over to your desktop, do a right click, new folder, and I'm going to see if I can find that new folder and see if I can type it in. Scotty stuff. All right. I'm going to take the contents of that folder and I'm going to just drag those over here. So in other words, I'm moving that stuff out so that if you call me two days from now saying, Scotty, that email is gone from four weeks ago. We've got it. We, we have it saved. Okay. Uh, you always, always have a backup. So now that that folder is gone, we're going to go back and we're going to open up mail and we're going to see some possibly strange things. We're going to see this whole reoccurrence of your email having to call back up to Google and say, hey, Google, download it. But this time, Nancy, I'm hoping that it's not going to call down the, um, the 15,000 emails that I believe that you encountered, but more so the 5,000. Uh, so we're going to try that. Let's let that cook. This is like a crock pot, Nancy. We're going to let this cook for a while, and then you communicate with me a little bit later this evening, and we'll see if it starts sinking, okay? All right. We're going to take on to the next person here. Let's see. I've got Lori with us this evening. Lori, are Hello. you with us? All right. What can I do for you, Lori? I am. Take it. What do you got? Do you have a question for us this evening or are you just hanging out? Can we look at iTunes? Yes. Would you like us to look at your iTunes or would you like to look at my iTunes? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Can you not hear? Yes, me? I yes, I can hear you, Lori. Do you have a question specific to your iTunes library so you'd like us to look at your screen? Or would you like me to answer the, the question using my own iTunes library? Sure. All right. All right, I'm going to send a... Yeah, let's, let's, let's look at mine. All right, uh, you should see a request for us to look at your screen. You've been made the presenter, so select to allow us to see your screen. Winchell, you'll be right. next. Can you see it? Uh, yes. Uh, no, not yet. It's pop. It's pulling up. Winchell, you'll be next. So if you've got a question, get ready. All right. We're looking at your. Uh, we're looking at your screen here, Lori. What is your question? Lori. Okay. Go ahead. So, so um, or, or why, why Adele? Adele. I don't know why, why this is this what, is what it looks like. like. Um, um, I, want, I, want, I want I want it to be a little bit more user friendly, and I want to be able to not have Christmas music on my phone right now since it's March. Yeah. And I want to be able to have Christmas only when I want it. Yeah. Okay. So you've you've crossed you you've crossed the um, how do I say it. You've crossed the, the great barrier here in that you have built such a large collection in your life that you've got all this Christmas music now, and if you put all of your music onto your phone, the Christmas music goes on there as well. I hit this problem several years ago, and several a lot of people hit this problem, especially if you have a lot of Christmas music. And, <laughs> and having taught elementary school for a great part of my life and having done a lot of Christmas a lot of Christmas programs, I have a lot of Christmas music. So I'm afraid, uh, Lori, you have a couple of different options here. One option is that you could introduce into your life something called a smart playlist. A smart playlist is a playlist that gives you the ability to set up rules. So let's say you make a smart playlist in iTunes and you could say, here's the rule. The rule is it can be anything except holiday music. Now, if all of your Christmas music is labeled as holiday music, then you will, you'll get a playlist of all of your music except for Christmas music, and then you will sync that playlist onto your phone. Does that make a little bit of sense of what I've said so far? Lori, are you with us? Yes. Um, I guess I don't know how. Yes. So basically, let's say you have 10,000 songs. 
and 200 of them are Christmas songs. What you want to do is make a list of all your songs except the, for the Christmas songs. Um, so let's let's do this. I'm gonna can uh, can you allow me to control your screen? You should see a request for me to control it. Do I have control of your screen yet? Yes, you do. All right, great. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is go up to the word view in iTunes because there's a couple things I want to see. Uh, and I'm a little slow here, and it's in the process of sending the genius information to Apple. That's that's slowing us down a little bit. That's taking up your internet connection. I wish there was a way just to turn that off. Uh, Winchell, do you have a thought on isolating that uh, without the Christmas music? Eliminating the Christmas music besides a smart playlist? Can you think of anything? We're going to show status bar. Besides a smart playlist, you mean? Yeah, besides a smart playlist. Well, what, 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 I, what, what I've done on my phone, I have a lot of that uh, train period railroad coming up for me during shuffles this weekend when I was playing uh, uh, my, on my phone. What, I, what I'm needing to do is... Uh, is create actual playlists that I want to hear and then singing only those playlists. That works really well as long as um, you're active or, or proactive with that. So what, what Winchell's saying there, Lori, obviously, is to not sync the entire library but to make specific playlists. Um, and you've done that. Like you could sync your Bob Marley or the Chilling in the Limo or whatever. But if you sync the entire list of, of music, they're going to come in. Now, in, in Lori's case, we look down at the bottom... She only has 900 songs. That's not really a lot of songs. Uh, but if we look up here at Santa Claus is coming to town and Santa Claus is back in town up here, we have a little bit of a problem here. The problem here, Lori, is that while the second issue here with Santa Claus is that it is listed as a holiday song, the first one at the top is listed as country. So in this case... And, and then there's another one down here. Santa Claus is coming down as listening as easy listening. So the first the first suggestion that I made to you, which was don't sync the genre of holiday to your phone, everything but holiday. That's not going to work right now because these genres are all wrong. Now you could go in, and if you're like me, I've got a lot of music, and I've had to do this quite a bit. You could go in and you could fix this. Now it's not pretty, but you could do it. You could select an entire album, and you could go Command-I, like we talked about earlier, I think, with Dave. If you go Command-I, you're getting information about this file, and if that will pop up here, we have the ability to change the genre of that song. Um, I'm having a really slow time finding your trying to get that up. I think I've lost you. Lori, can you still hear me? <clears throat> Lori, can you still hear me? We may have lost. We may have lost Lori because uh, I've lost control of her computer. Yeah, I can still hear you. Okay, all right, good. So, Lori, the problem here is that these genres, and I, I suspected this, and that's why I sorted them this way. Um, the problem here is that your Christmas songs, the computer doesn't know that they're Christmas songs. The computer just sees them as easy listening and rock and holiday. So. I see what you've tried to do. You've unchecked them, and if you uncheck them, they're not involved in the sync, and that's one way you could do it. But I think in the long run, what you might want to do is make an entire playlist of all your songs, because you only have 900, and then sort through, um, maybe search for the word Santa, search for Christmas tree, search for holiday, and then delete those files, those songs, out of the playlist. And then you'd sync that playlist. These are real general answers that I'm giving you, and to do this would maybe take a little bit longer than, than we want to dedicate here, but um, there are plenty of ways to do it. The, this is what I would do. If I were you, I would find all of my Christmas songs through my entire playlist, because you, you have under 1,000 songs. I have 25,000 songs. Uh, so I actually have 50,000 songs, but I had to cut my library in half because iTunes Match will only allow you to have 25,000 songs, but that's for another day. But you only have 900 songs, Lori, so you don't have a large collection of music in, in music terms. 
um, in iTunes terms these days. So what I would do is find all of those songs and switch the genre. Uh, let me try one more. I've lost control of your computer. Uh, your computer is kind of, we're about two minutes behind, so I'm not able to control your computer. But there is a way to do it. Let me jump back over and I'll show you on mine. Uh, if you want to change the genre of a song. Uh, tell me when you can see my screen. Just somebody, let me know. All right. I got it. Okay, so I'm going to go Command-I on one of my songs. And it's going to pull up the information here. Or maybe he can't do that. All right. Now, here I can select the genre. So I've, I've selected a song. I went Command-I, and it pulled up about this particular song. I have no idea what this is, but I'm going to select the genre. Let's say it was holiday. I'm going to select now it's 70s music. So I'm going to say OK on that. So now that has been changed. I just changed the genre on that song. Go ahead. Thought maybe somebody had a question. Scotty, can you sort the uh, music by the last date? Yes, you can. Yeah, uh, yeah, you can sort it by the last, the date that it was added, the last date it was. I think you can sort by the last date played. Let's go and look at our sorting options across the top here. Uh, you have different variables or different columns, but not all your columns are going to look like my columns. That is until you go up into iTunes and look under View and say Show View Options. If you say Show View Options, let's see, date played. Here it is, last date played. So if I select last date played, now I could sort if I really wanted to. Um, by, let me see if I can move that. Uh, I'm having a little bit of so If I had music that I had listened to since 2007, I should delete all that. Well, if it's if it's not music that you want, for me, no, I want to keep my music even if I haven't listened for something to something for the last ten years. I still want it because I enjoy discovering new music that's in my library. So here on my library, I've got twenty five thousand songs down there at the bottom. And by the way, I'm going to take a second to talk about iTunes Match on this. Um, iTunes Match. I am a candidate for iTunes Match. I know Winchell uh, very well. He and I are good friends, and he's he's very proficient at Apple stuff. So thanks, Winchell, for joining us this evening. Um, but Winchell is a candidate for iTunes Match, uh, and that means that we have very large music collections. We have I have paid Apple twenty five dollars a year, and what Apple did was they scanned through my library and they said, okay, you know what? Out of all this music, we have most of this music. So if you pay us $25 a year, Scotty, we will give you access to all of this music on your phone, on your iOS device. I cannot fit 127 gigs onto my phone. But what I can do is pay Apple $25. They then take all the music off of my phone and they give me a list of all the songs that I have. So if I'm connected to the internet and I go to play the song, the song comes down from the internet and then I can listen to it. If I have a song that only, or I have an audio file that only I have in the world, let's say my child's first words I recorded, let's say, uh, then they will upload that to their server and then I still have access to it if I'm on my phone. iTunes Match, is a, it, it sounds awesome and it, it's a little on the slow side. It's a little sluggish. There's still problems. I don't recommend it to everybody and I say nobody should consider it unless you're mm. over maybe 5,000 songs. But for somebody like Lori, then you've got 900 songs, 800 songs. Your your phone probably has enough room for all of those. It's just that Lori has the issue that these Christmas songs are in the way. So the only way that Lori is going to get those out is to either make a, sm a smart playlist to eliminate all the Christmas songs, uncheck all of the Christmas songs, or sync only specific playlists that don't have any of the Christmas songs in, in them in the first place. All right? Can you do like a batch genre change? Yes, you can. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. Yeah, you can change several at one time. So here's, here's what you can do. You can like type in a keyword in your, in your search library, like that, or Christmas, something like that. And then you can do like a batch uh, change, genre change on, 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 on songs like that keyword. Yes. I kind of do that for like Santa, Christmas, holiday, you know, 
whatever, whatever and then I'll, and, you know, create a genre and then, and then, and then uh, excluding that genre upon you know, your next thing. That would uh, knock out a lot of. Yes, that's. You know, that's a, you know, that, that'd be a place in my heart. Yeah, that's exactly right. In other words, uh, right now, I've got several songs selected. I'm trying to, my go to meetings in the way a little bit. Let me pull this down here. I just selected several songs. And if I go and I adjust the genre of, I, I use one window to adjust the genre of all the songs that I selected. You could do a search and, still, you know, like, like I said, Christmas tree, Santa Claus, any key terms that you can think of. And then you could change that to holiday if you wanted to. I have one here called Christmas. All right. That's a good tip. Uh, let's see. We've got several more people that have popped in since we last, uh, since I last kind of went through. Let me see if I can hit some people. Emma Day, what can I do for you this evening, Emma Day? Hey, Scotty. I was going to, I just had a question from listening to that. If you have a cloud account, do you have to have iTunes match to go on the phone and the iPad from your computer? Well, let's back up and, and, and clearly, uh, let's make the, the first term that you used, a cloud account. You're saying an iCloud <laughs> account? Is that what you're talking yes. about? Okay, so yes. an iCloud account really doesn't have any relevance to whether or not you decide to use iTunes Match. So iCloud uh -huh. accounts are for syncing contacts and calendars and some documents and pages and moving your pictures around. But if you want an iTunes Match service... That really has nothing to do with whether or not you use an iCloud account. Does that help okay. a little bit? Mm, so your music isn't being synced in iCloud. It's just if you have an iMac, if you have an iTunes Match account, that's right. then it will be. That's that's exactly right. Apple gives people okay. iCloud accounts for free, but they're not going to give you iTunes Match for free. I, Apple is trying to make as much money off of music as they can, so. Um, I don't have any music locally on my phone, if, but if I go into my settings and I scroll down to music, you will see that iTunes Match down there at the bottom is turned on. That means that I only have, and I use this word very specifically, I have access to my music, but I don't have the music here. I can download it, but if I'm in the middle of the Grand Canyon uh, and I want to listen to a song and there's no service in the Grand Canyon, I'm not going to listen to that song. It's only if I have move those things over ahead of time. And you can download them a la carte. So let me go into my music section here. Uh, I'm gonna go into my music and let me see, I'm in the radio area right now. Let me go to my songs. Uh, and here's another thing, iTunes Max is on the slow side. You look at my list of songs and there's some Pink Floyd. And notice on that Pink Floyd, there's a little cloud icon there. That means that I have a list of it. I see that I own that song. But if I wanted to listen to it, I could hit play and it would stream. But if I hit the cloud on the right-hand side, it will download. And now it's on my phone, and now I could listen to that in the Grand Canyon or on the plane where I don't have any, uh, any service. But again, just to reiterate, this has nothing to do with whether or not you have an iCloud account. All right? I'm gonna... All right, what about the songs that aren't... Available through the store. Excellent the question. Store. Excellent question. I answered you that. Downloaded them. Yes, you you have those, and I know something about Emma Day. She does have many unique audio files. These could be this could be Emma Day uh, has traveled the world, and she was a Grateful Dead fan for many many years. She rode in the back of a van, and she wore tie dye for like twenty five years with her dog, and she it. sold she sold her glass appliances. Me. To, to get her gas money. And one of the things that she did as uh, she was following the string cheese incident for the many years is that she recorded every single Grateful Dead concert uh, on the lawn and she, she had her microphone set up and no one else on the planet has those recordings of the Grateful Dead except for Emma Day. And they're all in her iTunes library. If Emma Day pays for iTunes Match, it's going to move up all the commercial stuff, no problem. Oh, she bought Grateful Dead's Greatest Hits. We have that. So it's that's fine. But it's those long recordings. It's those recordings that she did um, in 1972 under the Golden Gate Bridge while everybody was having a great time and it was a free, you know, free world. Those recordings, Emma Day, will also be uploaded to iTunes Match 
and you will have access to those unique recordings that only you have, but no one else in the world will have access to those because those are private to you. And those will stay on Apple's servers. All right? Okay. All right. One, one last thing about iTunes Match. Some people will do this. Uh, back in the early 2000s when iTunes first came out, people bought songs all the time and they bought what were, what were called 128-bit versions of these songs. iTunes Match now lets you stream down 256 kilobit versions of the songs. So the song qualities have increased. So some people pay for iTunes Match. They delete their library, and then they read down the better quality copies of those songs. I normally don't tell people to do that, but I just want you to know that that is available, and some people do that. Uh, I'm going to jump on because we got to keep going here. I've got, um, let's see, Joan. Joan's with us this evening. Joan, what can I help you with? I have a very quick non-tech question. In any program in which I'm typing, if I made an error or if they correct an error that's incorrect, I go back and fix it. Now, both in Word Perfect and Microsoft Word, I just tap something and got back to the end of the sentence, and I don't know how to do that in pages. So you want to be able to get your cursor back to the end of the page uh, or at the end of that text. To the end of the sentence. Yeah, the end of the sentence. I don't know the answer to this to off the top of my head. Winchell, do you have do you you, you understand her question? Uh, she's typed a sentence, she's jumped back in, and she wants to make a correction of that. But she is there a key command? The to only get way to the I can do it by hitting right arrow. You yeah. know, sometimes, sometimes fifty times, times if it's a long sentence. sentence. There's got to be a way because Workit does it in Microsoft Word. You just get something, something, and boom, went to the end of his sentence. So I've just written a sentence here. Where I Googled it over and over, and I cannot find an answer. Winchell, what do you got? Control arrow. It's All right. arrow between words. All right, so let's see. I've got this word here. I've, I've written a sentence, and I've made a mistake. So I need to, I've, I've moved right. in here, and now I'm going to fix that mistake. Command to go to, now I want to get to the end of the sentence. Right, right. Let's see. Control, control key one. arrow. I'm not. Okay. All right. That works. Okay. Do this. Um, I use the command key, so you can play around with this. But obviously, if you only use... Uh oh Give me a second here. Sorry. Uh, on my keyboard, if I just sit here and I go arrow, 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 that's what most of us do. But we also have this set of what are, right, we have these modifier keys over here. So these modifier keys help us to do things. They help quite a bit. Uh, if we hold a set, and we have three modifier keys, command, option, and control. So if you play around with holding the command, option, or control key in combination with your arrow keys, then you might discover something. For instance, going to the end of that actual line, if I hold down command, I'm going to try to do this while I'm holding it up command and arrow, it just jumped to the end of the line. All right, now I'm going to use arrow down. Now if I go arrow down, now it's at the bottom of that other sentence. So I didn't have to do the move, 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 up, 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 over, 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 over. I used my modifier keys. Now in my case, I went command and arrow to the right and it moved to the end of that line. It didn't move to the end of the sentence, but this is in text edit and I'm sure it will do similar things within different programs. Oh, okay. I, 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 I just have a piece of paper out so I can write it down. Now, here, okay. here's, the, here's the thing. Um, each program is going to have a slightly different modifier key. So Microsoft Word might say, you must use control arrow. Okay, no, I, I only hear about pages, Facebook, and Apple Mail. Okay, so Safari is Facebook. Uh, there is no Facebook command. It's all a browser. So or it could be Firefox that you're using. But my point here is that every program is going to have possibly a different modifier key. So I can't answer this universally saying it's absolutely going to be control arrow. It might be command arrow. So just play around with it and see which one works for you. All right? Okay, so maybe I'm better off just using arrow arrow to the left, to the right. Or... Use your modifier key and the arrow like we just did. So that would work as well. 
All right, uh, let's see. I think that I've hit everybody that's in the meeting once. I'm going to go back real quick to Daryl. Daryl, did you have anything else that uh, I, we skipped over you earlier? I'm fine, fine, Scotty. Thank you. All right, great. Yeah, it's wonderful to see everybody popping in here. Um, I've hit everybody. Yeah, record 11. Record 11 tonight, Scotty. Okay, great. Uh, well, I'll just go ahead and open it up, and now I guess the, rude, the more rude people who want to jump in uh, can and just... Pop in. Yes. Oh, look at Nancy raised her hand. The teacher in me, of course, goes to Nancy. Yes, ma'am, Nancy. Okay, okay so, so I bought the, the one, one terabyte, terabyte backup Seagate. Yeah. And it's still red or orange. And I mean, I just plugged it in. I thought it was just supposed to take off and do what it's supposed to do. If you've just bought it from the store and plugged it up, no, we have to do a couple of things. Uh, so you're going to see a request for us to look at your screen. And I've said this many times with lots of people. Um, Time Machine, I'm a big fan of Time Machine. I love Time Machine. I like the way it works. Uh, it has saved many people's bacon plenty of times. So over here in Nancy's, um, somebody's got some music playing. If somebody could maybe, okay. Uh, over here on Nancy's computer, she's got this hard drive that's just been plugged up. But she was expecting for Time Machine just to start working, but it didn't. So I'm going to select her hard drive one time, and I'm going to go Command-I, because I have a suspicion that when she bought it from the store, it's, um, it's a Windows drive. Okay, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't worry. Don't give me that look. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It said both. I know. That's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But here it is formatted for Windows NT. All right. In other words... When she bought it, it was made for the Windows machine. Now, a hard drive is a hard drive, and we can make it whatever we want. But we're getting ready to erase this. And because I'm not in her home right now, I'm going to double check and make sure that she hasn't stored anything on this drive. So the contents of this drive, she hasn't. There's nothing. We can erase all this garbage that Seagate put on here. Seagate wants you to use their little garbage stuff, ex executable files. We don't need any of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to rename this right now. So I'm going to click on this if I can, and I want to rename it. Let's see if I can rename it. Well, I'll just use get info. We'll rename it that way. Uh, well, I can't. I'll tell you what we'll do then. We just won't rename it. We're going to go to System Preferences, and we're going to go to Time Machine right here, fourth line. And now we have to select a disk. And see that green icon right there? That's what we want our Seagate drive to look like here in a minute. So we're going to go select disk and it says, okay, well, which, which one do you want to use? And we have that Seagate backup drive as a candidate. So we're going to select that. Now I see this green one. This means that she may have used a time machine backup in the past. Maybe, maybe Remember she, we did it. Yeah. It was full. Okay. Maybe she's got two. So when we hit this button, we're about to see a message. The message is going to say to us, oh, wait a minute, she's already using one. Do you want us just to replace that or use both? I love this window. We're going to use both. So that means that she can plug up either one. And I say this to everybody. I, say, I try to say this every time I work with somebody. You should have two backups. You should have one in your house and one not in your house. Because everybody in here knows someone that's been broken into. Or a fire. Or a flood or something. Uh, so we're going to use both. Now that means... And here's our message. Hey, this was formatted for Windows when she bought it. We're going to have to format this for the Mac, which means we're going to erase it. That's okay. We're going to erase that. We've already gone through that. Now it's going through its little song and dance. It's going to reappear on her desktop as a green drive, and all she has to do is alternate plugging up the older hard drive that she has and the newer hard drive that she just bought. She could leave one drive out in the clubhouse in the back, bring it in maybe every once in a while, plug it up, and then get it back out again. Or she could take it over to Grandma Edna's house that lives across the street. As long as she does that maybe every three months, every two, three, six months, if something catastrophic happens in Nancy's house, she can go back across the street, get the other drive, and at least be able to recover her life besides the last couple of months. That's better than nothing. All right, Nancy, that's done. Uh, and that drive is now... Right, so yeah, go ahead. I was thinking that you told me... I think this one was full. I would not have led you to believe that the hard drive was full and could not back up anymore. But I would say that the hard drive is full. Time Machine's, drive, Time Machine's job is to make the hard drive full. It's to fill the drive completely up. 
and then erase the older versions of the exact same information. Now, as long as, and this is a little math here, as long as the, we have, in backups, we have two words, the source and the target. The source, in your case, is your hard drive on your computer. The target is a backup drive. Your source and your target. Your target drive has to always be at least, if not greater than, the size of your source. So if your source drive, your internal drive, is a terabyte drive, but your backup drive is a 250 gig drive, a terabyte's worth of information will not fit inside that. So maybe that's what we were talking about, I can't remember, but if you were to plug that other hard drive up, we could get info and we could see the size of that drive and we'd be fine. But uh, let's take a look at your source and your target. Her source drive is Macintosh HD. Her target drive is the Seagate backup drive. So here it is. She has a source drive of 1,000 gigs, she has a target drive of um, 1,500 gigs. She's fine. Her, her target is larger than her source, which is great. That's a little complicated. I'm maybe not using the most friendly terminology, but, but that's it. All right, somebody jump in. Uh, oh, actually, no, yeah. Debbie. I'm sorry. Debbie just popped in, and we haven't talked to Debbie yet. Debbie, can you hear us? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Debbie, what can we do for you this evening? Well, my goal tonight was just to get on and see what it's about, and um, I'm not going to ask you questions until I understand how it works a little better. Well, we don't want your kind here, Debbie. You need to get out of here. Oh. Right? No, I'm just kidding. Well, I have a list of questions. Well, do you have a simple um, one? one? You have one? One thing is I was I tried to set up the latest iPhoto on my um. You had told me when you were here to buy the latest iPhoto. Yeah. And I tried to do it, and I don't know if I properly did it, but I wanted to get photos on my phone. Okay. That were from my iPhoto that were on my laptop. Okay. All right. This uh, and this can so, this can be done. So far, my phone is not showing anything. And what I plugged it in, but I don't know exactly how to, um, you know, make it download to my phone. Okay. So I, I tell people this all the time. There is a mantra that we all must understand when it comes to pictures and our phones and iTunes and our computers. There is a program that's in the control of one way and there's another program in control of another way. And this is what I tell everybody to remember. All right, so here we go. I should write this down. Um, iPhoto is in charge of taking the pictures off of your phone. iTunes is in charge of putting pictures back onto your phone. Those are two different programs. Apple should have done this better, but this is, this is how this works. Again, I'll say it again. iPhoto takes the pictures off of your phone. iTunes is in charge of what pictures go back onto your phone. Now, here's the weird thing. iTunes understands the pictures that are inside iPhoto. So most of the time, I deal with people whose problem it is that they filled their phone up with pictures, and even though PhotoStream is moving the pictures off, I deal with this probably three or four times a week. People have filled their phones up and they got 1,500 or 2,000 pictures on their phone and they never took them off. And they say to me, well, I keep plugging it up into iTunes, but iTunes isn't taking them off. That's correct. iTunes is not taking your pictures off of your phone. iPhoto takes the pictures off, but then they're looking for a place inside iPhoto to put the, to put the pictures back on to the phone. Uh, thank you, Joanne, by the way. I saw the comment. Thank you. That's cool. By the way, for those of you looking at my screen tonight, my boat is the third from the left. It's next to the yellow boat. It says Vinny 2, named after my dog, and that was from the snow the other night. Joanne made a comment about it. So uh, we've got to deal with both programs, Debbie, when we are working with pictures on our phone. If you just want to move some pictures over to your phone, then you have to deal with iTunes. So let me see if I can get my iTunes up here and show you. All right, so there's my phone in the left-hand column of iPhoto. I'm sorry, iTunes. So I'm going to select my phone. Now when I select my phone, I have an, a set of variables up here at the top. And it really is surprising to me how few people in the world realize that these are up here. Uh, you've got to plug your phone up so to the you have to, you have to have your You have to have your phone plugged in to be able to see it in the left-hand column? Let's say yes to that for now. Uh, okay. The reason I reason I don't say declaratively yes is because if you look down here, Debbie, there's a little checkbox down here that says sync this phone over Wi-Fi. 
I could mm -hmm. so select that and unplug, but for I'm going to assume that that's not checked for most people. So I have to plug it up to iTunes. Now I select the phone in the left-hand column, but now going across the top, iTunes puts the pictures onto the phone. So let's say two years ago I went to Disney World and I made a play or I made a folder uh, album in iTunes of all my favorite Disney pictures. Uh, or I went to go visit Winchell and I took some pictures, some great pictures of, of Winchell and I, and I've got those as a, an album in iPhoto. And I want to move those pictures of Winchell and I back into my phone so that when I'm walking around with my friends, I can show them to them. I have to put my phone into the computer, plug it up, go to iTunes, select the phone in the left-hand column, then go to these variables, and in this case, I'm going to choose photos. Now, when I select photos, I have to decide, am I going to sync the photos from iPhoto? Yes, I am. Now, am I going to sync every single photo onto... No, I'm not. I, I'm going to run out of space. I'm only going to sync over certain albums. So I'm going to select whichever ones that I want, and then those will move over. Okay? Okay. That's the answer to that. We have time. Okay. We have time for uh, maybe one more question. Somebody want to just jump in? Oh, actually, I've got I've got Fran that just I see Fran popped in. I might not get to everybody, but Fran, you just popped in. What can I do for you, Fran? Oh, hi. I have a quick question. Um, so I'm starting to use that Gmail more. I'm telling everyone to email me there, and um, I'm trying to figure out how to permanently change the font. The default font is like 12 points, but that's just not big enough for me. So. I've been changing it like every time I do an email, but I can't wait to make it stick. Yeah, should be a pretty simple answer to this. So we'll I will pull it up right now. Let me uh, get oh, over good. to some Gmail here, or it doesn't matter. Now, I, there's something that I do know about uh, uh, Fran here, and I'm gonna tell on you a little bit, Fran. Fran is one of these people. That's okay. Yes, okay. Fran is one of these people that sometimes. She doesn't like change, and she goes right back to www.yahoo.com or www.gmail.com. In other words, she uses a web browser often to look at her email. So if, Fran, you do that, if you make that mistake and you go to the web browser again, this is not going to help you. But if you continue to devote yourself... I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Good. If you <laughs> devote yourself to using the stamp the Apple's mail program, the, I call it the stamp with the eagle on it, then you can make changes to these fonts. So I'm going to, and by the way, if I'm going too fast through any of this, and I appreciate everybody sticking with us, if I go too fast for this, I record everything every single Monday night, and then by tomorrow this will be posted on my website, and it's in an area called Previous Town Halls. So uh, if I answered your question a little bit too quickly, it's all recorded, and you can go back and start and stop it. It's a YouTube video. Uh, so... To answer your question, Fran, because we're running a little bit out of time here, I want to adjust these fonts. So here's what I'm going to do. I've got my mail up. I look in the top left-hand corner, and I've got the word mail. I click mail, and I go to preferences. Now I've got mail's preferences up. From mail's preferences, give me a second to adjust something here. From mail's preferences, I can go to fonts and colors. If I select fonts, now I have the ability to change my fonts. My message font is 12, but my eyes are going. I can't see very well anymore. So I select and I choose. You got that right. Yeah, from now on, 14. And now it will give me the ability to make my default okay. font a little bit larger. But I'm going to throw in a couple of other pieces here. I'm going to throw in two more things. These are I'm going to answer these questions for free. All right, here you go. Uh, Fran, up here across the top, there's a, mm -hmm. there's a bar. This bar gives us these different buttons, and a lot of us don't know that we can actually add buttons to this. One of my favorite buttons to add is the ability to make the font larger and smaller uh, because my eyes are gone. Because this is not an iPad, and we can't reach up to our screen and just pinch, you know, uh, like we can on an iPad. So I'm going to go to View. I'm going to go to Customize Toolbar, and I see a little group of pictures. And this little one right here with says smaller and bigger, I'm going to pull that and put that to the top here. Now, when I get an email from someone uh, and the email is too small for me to see, I can go up and I can click bigger, 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 and it will make it bigger for me or smaller, smaller, smaller to reduce or, or increase it. One more thing. Now, what I just told you, Nancy's going, wow, that's awesome. But now I'm going to follow that up. Putting the button up there is for old people, but we're all you, you, we're all youthful. 
The old people need the bigger one. Us young people, we use the key commands because the key commands make things so much faster. So instead of moving your mouse like an old person and clicking the letter A, 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 let's use our key commands. And our key commands are command plus or command minus. So if I hold command plus or command minus, I can decrease the size of the text or increase the size of the text. And that works in Safari, Facebook, anything where you want this, the, the font to be larger while you're looking at it. Now, I do have a little bit of bad news here for you. Uh, I can't remember who I was talking to, who asked this question. Uh, Fran. Fran. Fran, I do have some bad news for you. Fran, if you send me an email that's gigantic and large with, with all these fonts, um, I may have said it just to, I just want to see my email smaller. I may just set it so that even though you sent it so it makes you feel good, I'm looking at it smaller. So in other words, you can't control what other people, how other people view your email so much. And you might also choose a font that I don't have installed on my computer. Sometimes people do that. But generally, Helvetica, Chicago, Roman, all those, those are standards. Okay, guys? Okay. Right, right. Thank you. All right, I'll have this recorded. I will get. Uh, we'll we'll be uh, hopefully next week as well. I will send the notifications out. Not every single week because I have a lot of people that don't like that. And every time I send a notification out, I get about fifteen to twenty people that unsubscribe. So um, just don't want to bother people too often. I'm thinking bi-weekly, but maybe monthly. But I do appreciate everybody. If you have not uh, done it in the past, I would very much love. For anybody that has not to fill out a, a quick review for me if you go to my website you can go to ratings and reviews submit a review for me it I would really appreciate it if you would do that you could write anything bad or good that you'd like um, currently currently I did that I hope you saw it great thank you currently I am number two on Apple's uh, consultants rating list uh, for the entire world Yay. which is great I'm gunning for number one so uh, thanks again guys and I will see you all uh, hopefully next week Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.